Now we're going to talk about the rotation and the revolution of the Earth and some related concepts. We've already said that the Earth rotates on its axis. So here's the Earth and this is the equator. And so the axis of the Earth is this imaginary line that runs through the center. And the Earth spins about on its axis, like that. And the rotation of the Earth causes day and night. It causes the sun to rise and set. The sun isn't going around the Earth. The sun's really way back there, way back in the distance. And as the Earth rotates, the sun appears to rise and set from our point of view. The same thing with the moon. The moon is here orbiting the Earth. But as the Earth spins, the Moon appears to rise and set. And the spinning of the Earth is more, a more significant factor in the apparent motion of the Moon, because the Moon goes completely around the Earth once in a month. But it, it, uh, goes, uh, it rises and sets every day as the Earth rotates, or just about every day. And the, the rotation of the Earth also causes the stars to rise and set. And here's a picture taken with a time exposure, which means the shutter of the camera was left open. Um, it looks like for several minutes, maybe half an hour or so. Um, and you can see on the road here, this is these are some buildings, and along the road here, you can see these lights from headlights as cars drove by, and the, the shutter was long enough for this entire drive, and probably a lot longer, because instead of seeing points of light in the sky, we see these arcs as the star, stars moved across the sky due to the rotation of the Earth. And you could actually tell by the length of the arc how, how long the shutter of the camera was open. And, and you see these are actually in circular paths, all of these arcs. And if you went down in this direction, you would find the center of the circle. It's out of view in this picture, but the center of the circle would be the North Star. And that's because the North Star is uh, is pointed to by the axis of the Earth. And so if you, were, if you were standing here, for example, looking up that way, you would see everything as if it were rotating about the North Star. All of the star trails in the sky would form circles. Another effect of the rotation of the Earth and the revolution of the Earth, along with the tilt of the Earth's axis, is the seasons. And you can draw, draw a diagram in your notes like I'm going to draw here. The angle at which the sun's rays strike the Earth's surface determine how much the, Earth, the, the surface of the Earth heats up. So let's say here's the Earth's surface here, and, and here's some incoming rays of sunlight. I'll draw them like this, and I'll try to draw them parallel, because incoming rays are essentially parallel. Okay, so these rays come in like this, and this diagram would be the case in the winter. In the winter, the sun is not as high up in the sky, and so the sun's rays are coming in at a more shallow angle. And if you imagine, think of a cross-sectional area of this amount of light here. So the light that's coming through this, you can think of that as like a flat lens or just a, a, a imaginary section of space. The light coming through that much area is spread out over the earth over a larger area because of the because of the angle in the summer let's draw a diagram over here that that represents summer in summer the sun is higher in the sky and let's imagine it's straight overhead so these rays of sunlight are coming straight down and now you can see that the light coming through say this circle right here circle seen from the edge is spread out over a smaller area. It's not, it's not spread out as much. So the sunlight is more concentrated. There's more energy per square meter striking the Earth's surface. So the, the surface of the Earth heats up more in the summer because the direct striking of the sun's rays causes more energy per amount of area. Now whether the light is striking at a shallow angle like that or a steep angle like that is determined by the tilt of the Earth and where you are on the Earth and the position of the Earth in its orbit around the Sun. So let's draw this diagram again and there's another place in, in your notes you can draw this. This is the diagram we're going to see a lot with the Sun in the center and the Earth going around it. 
And so let's put the Earth, we'll, um, we'll draw the Earth in four different positions. So let's picture the orbit of the Earth is going around the Sun like that. So this is a circle seen in a perspective view of the Earth's orbit being approximately circular. So here's the Earth over here, of course not drawn to scale, and let's draw it tilted a little bit. The axis, the axis of the Earth is tilted, so, so here's our North Pole and our South Pole like that. And then let's draw another picture over here of the Earth, and it's tilted like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redraw that one. Hold on just a second. Okay. Okay, and then let's draw one. Let's draw one in back here, and I'll make the one in back a little bit smaller, and the one in front here a little bit bigger, just to mentally aid in the perspective view. And we'll draw some little dotted lines here representing the orbit. Okay, so the Earth moves around the Sun like that. Okay, in the northern hemisphere, you can see, look over here at this picture, the rays of the sunlight are coming in and they're striking directly onto the northern hemisphere. And down here in the southern hemisphere, these rays of sunlight coming in are striking at a shallow angle. Because of the tilt of the Earth's axis, the angle at which the sunlight strikes the Earth is different in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So you see, north of the equator, it's going to be summer. The direct striking of the rays causes more heat to be transmitted to the surface. So it's the summer in the northern hemisphere right there. And at the same time that it's summer up north, it's winter down south. Then six months later, the Earth is over here. And you can see the incoming rays of sunlight are striking the area below the equator rather directly. And they're striking the area above the equator at a shallow angle. So in this diagram, or in this part of the diagram, the Earth is seen where it's a winter in the northern hemisphere and summer in the southern hemisphere. And over here, at this point, this would be in, in between. This would be fall in the northern hemisphere, and this would be spring in the northern hemisphere. Now, if you're near the Earth's pole, say up here near the North Pole or down near the South Pole, the light is striking at a shallow angle all the time. The, the Earth never changes its tilt, or, or not much, and it never the, the North Pole never points toward the Sun. If it did, it would be very warm at the North Pole. And the same with the South Pole. The poles are always cold, and that's why there's snow at those places. Because even in the summer, say right, right here is summer in the Southern Hemisphere, it's still a shallow angle at which the sunlight is striking the South Pole. So the poles are always cold, and that's why. It has to do with the angle of the sunlight striking the Earth. And that's why we have seasons, and why the seasons are opposite in the northern and southern hemispheres.